Hi, Jamie McIntyre here. I'm live in Los Angeles, California. I have a very special guest we're about to interview in just a moment. You may have first heard of this particular gentleman when you're watching a movie called Conan the Barbarian many years ago, or perhaps it was a, a bodybuilding documentary called Pumping Iron, or perhaps movies such as Terminator, Kindergarten Cop, or Twins, or when he was elected 38th Governor of California. Of course, by now, you know we're talking about the one and only Arnold Schwarzenegger. Let's go live and ask Arnie some questions. Arnie, we have some questions submitted. One here from Red Simons, ABC Melbourne. Uh, you've made it to the top in sports, Hollywood, business, uh, politics. Which of those areas has been the most satisfying for you? You know, I uh, could not pick one that is uh, more satisfying than the other because to me, at each one of those, uh, when I was young, 15 years old, to me, the most important thing was to become the bodybuilding champion and to become one of the strongest guys and to bench press 500 pounds and all of those things. To me then, being a public servant meant nothing. So when I became the champion, the world champion, you know, that was the most satisfying feeling. And then especially winning one championship after the other uh, and then winning 13 world championship titles, that was fantastic. But then all of a sudden I grew out of that stage of that being the most important thing to be the most muscular man. And I wanted to get into movies. So then when I became, uh, you know, the movie, the leading man in the movies and the, the action star and ma I made my way up uh, to the top and, uh, you know, made over $30 million a uh, movie and all those things, I then felt like that was the most satisfying thing at that point. And then I went into politics. So I think it, it really, it, it depended what stage I was in in my life, but they all were very, very satisfying. And uh, I, I would say actually uh, being a public servant and uh, being the governor of the state of California because you're now representing 38 million people. Uh, and it's the eighth largest economy in the world. Uh, I think that probably on the end did become the most satisfying thing for me. Uh, Critica Sarah from 21st Century News wants to know, do you learn, learn more from your successes or failures in life? I think it's very important that we learn from uh, the successes and the failures because I think that uh, if I think about, you know, uh, when I look back at my bodybuilding career, all of the principles that I used uh, were very important for me to win and to win one championship after the other. Uh, I then used those principles that made me a win in bodybuilding also in acting because there there were uh, times where I needed to, you know, uh, get up again and uh, and continue on and not give up. There was times when I struggled uh, and I had to learn from that. Uh, there was times where I had to really use team effort and not just rely on myself, uh, which again, I learned from sports. So there's endless amount of things of breaking the rules and all of those things, endless amount of things that I've learned from success in bodybuilding that I used also for the success in show business and also for the success uh, in, in, in public service. But the failures, when you fall, you also learn a lot and you also have to then kind of dissect that and analyze that and then make you kind of take advantage of those kind of things so you don't make the same mistakes again. AAP is question because you're speaking at the Financial Education Summit in Australia, they said, is money a key to happiness? Not at all. I think that uh, uh, money is very important if that's your goal. Uh, to me, I, my goal was when I came to America that I wanted to become, you know, uh, the top bodybuilding champion, get into movies and make millions of dollars. Not necessarily from show business, but I got into real estate and I started really reading everything and learning everything about real estate and started, you know, buying rental properties, uh, apartment buildings and houses and stuff like that, office buildings. And I really started making my first million dollars. Uh, in real estate, not in show business. And the reason why that was important to me was because I wanted to become financially independent enough that I don't have to take crappy roles because they offered all kinds of things to be a bouncer, to be a Nazi officer, to be a football player and a wrestler and all those kind of weird kind of things. And I wanted to become a leading man. So by being financially independent, I never had to really sell out and just take any part in order to make a living. Um, Ian Vale, Fairfax Media, asks, when you look at your time in politics, what do you think were perhaps any missed opportunities? In politics? In politics, yeah. Uh, I think that um, uh, my uh, political career uh, was uh, very interesting because I had some great successes and then I had also some failures as with everything else. 
And I think that uh, uh, probably uh, in uh, 2005, when I had the special election here, there was some missed opportunities. I think that I could have handled the situation better, brought both of the parties together earlier than waiting for 2006. I think that it took me a while to really um, understand the importance of bringing both of the parties together. Even though well, I was I always was kind of post-partisan and bipartisan and all of those things. But uh, I think that uh, in 2006, it started really clicking a year after my failure of the special election. And then I started bringing both of the parties together. And that's when we really accomplished the most. Um, role models in life, who's perhaps been top one or two biggest influences? I would life? say Reg Park, who uh, was a three-time Mr. Universe and did Hercules movies. He was my early inspiration when I got into bodybuilding. Uh, but then later on, uh, you know, Ronald Reagan uh, was a great inspiration to me in, in politics and uh, Nelson Mandela uh, and, uh, you know, Miguel Gorbachev. Um, and in and, and athletics, uh, Muhammad Ali for his generosity. Um, and, uh, you know, in acting, it was, you know, Kirk Douglas and Clint Eastwood. Uh, those were the big guys for me when I was a kid that I wanted to emulate and, uh, you know, be uh, on that same level. And uh, that's what I was striving for. So, Ani, you went from uh, Hollywood to politics and politics now back to Hollywood. Some mm -hmm. people would say acting and being a politician is the same thing. How's that transition been? Um, well, I think it's important to um, make people understand what that means because Ronald Reagan also said that many times. And uh, I think what it means really is it's not that when you're in politics that you should act as if you are interested in a certain subject or in a certain issue. Uh, but what it means is that you have to, in acting, the first thing that they always tell you is connect with the people. Don't just say words but really mean it and let it come from the inside out and connect with the people because that's how you bring the people in and that's how you become a star and this is how you become popular and all those things. And the same is in, in politics. There's so many politicians that stand in front of the audience and they just say words and you don't even pay much attention to what they say. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think it's important that you really mean what you say and that you're passionate and that you, uh, you know, don't talk down to people, that you connect with the people and get inside the people. And then you have them follow you and follow your philosophy and so on. And so I think that's the key thing. That's why there is a similarity in, uh, with acting and uh, uh, with being a political leader. Um, if they ever change the U.S. Constitution that you could become run for presidency of the United States, would you ever consider that and what would you want to change? Oh, I have said many times uh, that I uh, would consider that, uh, you know, immediately. Uh, because I think it's uh, whenever you are, uh, again, shooting for the top, I mean, I always shot for the top if it was in, in bodybuilding or if it was in, in show business. Uh, it's natural that in politics I would have shot also for the top. But... That's not possible because the U.S. Constitution doesn't allow uh, foreign-born foreign born citizens to run for president. And um, the interesting thing about it is that this is the land of opportunity, America. And everything that I've accomplished uh, in my life, I think, was because of America. And, of course, I had the will and that the will to work hard and all those things. But the, without America, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So running for president is really the only thing that I can't do. So I'm not going to complain about that one thing. Well, thanks, Riani, for your time today. And we know you're a busy person. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have you heard the news? This June, Arnold Schwarzenegger is back in Australia. Proudly brought to you by Jamie McIntyre and 21st Century Education. Don't miss out on your chance in seeing The Terminator live. Book now, Perth, Sydney and Melbourne. I'm Marty Fields and we're here at the 21st Century Financial Education Summit here at High Sense Arena in beautiful Melbourne. Two days of experts in the field of finance and wealth creation talking to people who are really, really keen to make the most of their own potential. I'm sure we've all come here for different reasons, but I've always been an achiever and 
I get excited about these events. Uh, if you're interested in foreign exchange, or if you're interested in the, uh, sh share trading, th there's a talk on everything. I am interested in setting up a wealth creation plan for the next 10 years. I've retired. I need to get an income. I'm sure I can learn from the people who have made it. We want to be entrepreneurs, basically. We want to get out of the rat race, so to speak. We're all in uni, we're all working, we all think that nine to five jobs are the answer when realistically they're not and so we want to kind of get outside that racket and move forward as an entrepreneur and that's a, it's a hard thing to comprehend without actually hearing people that are up on stage that are kind of like mentors. And this is where it all happens, inside the High Sense Arena, speaker after speaker telling people how to make the most of their potential. You're going to be the world's greatest, but you got to believe. You gotta believe in the power that's in you. Because it's in there. It's just a matter of believing and then getting it out. Well, I played professional basketball for 16 years. And the one thing that I, that I learned from playing professional basketball uh, was that uh, in order to be successful, you had to have discipline, you had to have vision, you had to have uh, a lot of pride in yourself. What brought me here was uh, like-minded entrepreneurs. Life is too short. You are meant to play big. You are not meant to play small. You have a purpose while you're here. It doesn't matter um, how much money you have. It doesn't matter your education. It is absolutely possible for you to be a business owner and a self-sufficient and have multiple sources of income. I'm a, I like to think I'm an example of that. Mm. I mean, really coming from where I came from and to be able to have a handful of companies and a couple TV shows that, you know, have taken people out of Skid Row in Los Angeles and, and brought them to um, close to millionaire status in four months says a lot. I focus on mindset, really shifting people's paradigms and helping them to get associated with what they love to do and then how they can build a business doing what they love. See, what I want to help you do is I want to help you turn that hobby. I want to help you turn that passion into a wealth generating vehicle for yourself. I'm originally from the United States and I spent a lot of years doing things that I didn't love and not making money and I figured out that I wanted to do what I loved and I wanted to make money. I'm going to show you how big developers in Melbourne are making an absolute killing in property right now by adding value to land. Eventually, after years of investing, I had the option of, of actually not working and having a choice of not to work. And that was a, I remember that day when I walked into my manager's office and I told him I can no longer afford to actually work here. So he was in shock. Obviously, I didn't need a reference letter from, you know, from that bank. I'm here with the beautiful Toddy Goldsmith. He's just come off from drawing an amazing prize. A really nice picture. I drew a really nice picture. Yeah. The was... sun and a little house and some trees. It was a boat. She drew a boat. <laughs> I drew Person. a 60 foot yacht cruise on Jamie McIntyre's boat for 20 people with a skipper, thank God someone's going to yeah, drive, yeah. a waiters, food and beverage. So if your birthday is on the 5th of February, this is yours. <laughs> Make some noise, 5th of February. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring to the stage the person responsible for all of us being here. He's the CEO, he's the founder, he's the main man, he is the architect. Give it up. Jamie McIntyre is coming to the stage. Put your hands together for him, make some noise. We've managed to grab Jamie, the driving force behind this entire event, and then 30 seconds downtime that he's had all day. Jamie, how's it going? The event uh, holds eight and a half thousand, and we uh, we just oversold that slightly. So um, uh, it's been it's been great. We can't fit any more people in. The ones that are fulfilled and happy don't go for significance. Do what Mother Teresa did. If you want to become significant, become significant by making a difference in the world. I've uh, been great speakers. We had Tim Ferriss up earlier today. I've had zero fatalities in four years of startup investing and I've had at this point more than a 20x return on my uh, my cost basis and that comes from doing the type of analysis we just talked about. Once you have control of your most valuable non-renewable resource, i.e. time, you can lose money and make it back. Time, not the case, not yet. Not only is the main room going, but there's of course two other breakout rooms, the East Wing and the West Wing. The speakers here aren't any less interesting, informative or worthwhile. They're just in smaller rooms, more intimate audiences and perhaps more focused subjects. I always love working with the 21st century group because it's a big family and we all get to uh, create wonderful lifestyles and, uh, and learn a hell of a lot. In the house, boy! In the house! Let's do this thing, baby! Let's rock the house! Let's rock the house! We doing it! We doing it! Just how we do it! 21st century! Give me time, it'll bring me life.
world can't stop me now. This is amazing. Hi, I'm here at 21st Century. I was at the Financial Summit this weekend. It was fantastic, very inspiring. Um, I saw Sir Richard Branson, who was absolutely amazing, as to be expected. And then I had a good dance to Havana Brown, so it's been a really great weekend. Amazing. You, I learnt so much about business, about investing and trading. I'm really, I'm really excited to get started. What do you think about the conference? If you don't come and listen to what these people have to say, I don't think you will be able to live. That's a big call. The whole thing was inspiring and done. Mm. Walk away from here going really inspired to just... Take action. Take action, yeah. It's invaluable for any business, any consultant. Um, the information itself is, you know, if you're not here, you're missing out. Rory, what do you think about uh, Tim Ferriss? Richard Branson? What field of business are you in, Rory? came along to watch Jamie McIntyre, Tim Ferriss. It's just been an amazing day full of a lot of information. I had a great time today and I would recommend it to anyone. Thanks. Hi guys, we're here today at the 21st Century Education Financial Education Summit. My life right now is dedicated to empowerment and enlightening. I want to talk to you about vision and the importance of, of having a vision. Vision is about looking within yourself and connecting with the future. The question is, are you ready, physically, mentally, and emotionally ready to elevate your life? Who's ready? I want to give you as much as I possibly can in the short time that we have with each other so that you leave here today with enough tools, strategies and ideas to dramatically improve the quality of your life. I promise that you'll get more out of the next three days than you would an entire year at university. My role as, a, as I guess a friend and a coach, if you want that, is to encourage you to think. I'm here to suggest as Australians, what we need is not financial planners, we need financial education. I just wanted to give you guys a, a bit of an insight into where I've been and, and I guess the experiences I've had. You have to want it. If you want to be successful, if you, and you, you know, you're kicking the door down to be successful, then you will be successful. Success is not a measure that someone else can measure for you. There is only one person in the world who knows what makes you happy and only one person in the world responsible for making you happy. You see, if the desire is strong enough, we will help you find a way. Do you know by having super high end brand name award winning architects like this, that it does amazing things to the price. And these are the sorts of things you should always be looking for because it's what we look for. So it's the lunch break here again and we've got Mass with us. Um, yay! <laughs> How's it going so far? Oh, fantastic. It's really pumped in there. Very well, yeah. It's a very, so far it's a very exciting and interesting event. We're having a good time. We're really grateful to 21st Century for the education that we've had over the years. We don't use retirement. We use the word Freedom Day. I don't use the word budgets because budgets are like diets. No one's doing those either. And then another word that I think is just despicable is savings. You don't save, you invest or you spend and you purposely use your cash. Savings is like a wimpy little way to put money in a bucket and then if you need something kind of casually, you pull it out. We give people like yourself the opportunity to come to our trading floor, which is situated in North Sydney, and we pair you up and sit you down amongst some of the best traders in the country and we teach you how you can generate yourself an immediate income from trading the currency market straight away. What we do is teach people just like you how to make money from trading markets. I don't like the word retirement, but I use exit strategy. So we help clients get their exit strategy. Now, I have a very contrarian view how to invest and allow me, with your permission, I'm going to show you what I personally believe is by far the most profound way of investing, 
which is very, very different to how most individuals would actually view investing in the first place. So Ben, how's the event going so far? Yeah, fantastic actually, I'm really enjoying it. I do go to quite a number of events and this one was very much what I needed and wanted. Gail, how was it? It was awesome, it's been uh, very informative, lots of learning, my brain is absolutely full right now. We're going to educate you on where to buy in the country, what properties to buy and how to actually go through the process. What I've been doing since 1996 is very simple. I've been working with people and teaching them how to build a business on the internet. How many of you would like to generate a hundred million dollars in sales? Anybody? Yes? When I first launched these companies back in 2001, we were doubling our revenue every single year. Persistence, enthusiasm, focus. If you use those three words in anything you've got to do, any problem, challenge you've got, use those three words, you'll be fine. Who wants to see their life go to another level, yes? Who'd like to see their incomes go to another level? Who'd like to see their relationship go to another level? How many of you want to go to the top? Now, how many of you here? How many of you here want to create some wealth in your life? Please raise your hand. But how many of you know the biggest sabotager of your money is? Put your hand up if you know you're the problem. Matter of fact, stand up if you know you're the problem. There is a big myth about turning passions into profits. And we're going to dispel that myth and show you how you genuinely turn your passion into profits. Sound good? This is the relationship that a lot of people have with money. They have this needy, clingy, demanding relationship where they, they think they're entitled. And they always want more. Whatever they have is never enough. And so money sees this as an energy, as a conscious form. It goes, you know what, let's just stay away from this person. Here's the thing, proof, proof, proof is the most important thing. People don't, don't buy from you if they don't believe you, all right? And people don't buy from you if they don't trust you. <laughs>